I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're finally going for an LC500. Twenty twenty one Lexus LC five hundred convertible without launch control. <laughs> That's so good. Horsepower and torque four hundred and seventy one horsepower, three hundred and ninety eight pound feet of torque from a five liter V eight. Say it again. Five liter V8. Oh, oh, oh. Love it. Okay, so we finally have an LC500. Yes, and we have it in convertible form with such a good spec. This is such a good first LC500 version to drive. And by the way, if you like those really hype intros, we've got one in every single video, so maybe consider subscribing. Thank you. So since I mentioned this amazing spec, let's talk about the looks, starting with this beautiful red color. Oh my God, the way it reflects in certain lighting conditions is amazing. It's kind of like that Mazda Miata red. It's such a good red, like there's so much depth to the paint. And especially the way it pops off these body lines, because this is one of the few cars that is exactly like the concept. The body lines of this are so smooth. They're Yuri, like- Yuri, can we just acknowledge that we're in an LC500? Yes. It took us so long to get one of these, okay, but we but finally got one. All these, right, all right. These body lines, like, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's such a good shape, like the big wide rear fenders and the way it kind of comes in and out a bit against the front wheels. It's beautiful, it's stunning, it's gorgeous. There's not a single thing wrong with the looks. Uh, agree. Okay, front end, we've got the big Lexus grill and this is like the most Lexusist of the Lexusist grills. Yes, the flagshipiest of the grills. And the flagshipiest headlights as well, I guess? Yes, love it. So then this being a convertible, does it lose anything? No, I don't really think so. The only thing is it doesn't look that good with the top up, which is fine because you should be driving this with the top down all the time anyways. And you guys know I'm not a fan of soft top convertibles, but this is, I think, one of my favorite looking ones. I don't think it loses that much even with the top up. And we also have it in this gorgeous shade of tan. Yeah, I think this is the best looking automatic convertible designed since 1997. Oh, good one. Yeah, I didn't say it though. <laughs> so then moving on to the back end, we've got really cool taillights that are almost infinity taillights. Yeah, there's a lot of depth to them where it looks like there's so many different layers of taillight. Because if you kind of look in there from different angles, it looks like it never ends. And then sometimes it's all whited out if you're not running your daytime running lights, which also kind of looks like you said an Iron Man mask where it's just blank white eyes. Yeah, and then the turn signals are just like these kind of slits on the side. Everything just looks so good back there. Yeah, how about the exhaust? Exhaust is decent because the circular tips are kind of blacked out and hidden inside the fake tips. 2021 real. Well, my ISF had kind of the same thing going on way back in 2008, so. But it sounds really good. So Sav good. Savage Geese tribute. That's right, buddy. He stole those upshifts from us in his LC500 review, so now we're gonna sue him for approximately $388. We should sue him for five liter V8 dollars. And one thing that we skipped over, which is probably the best part for me of the side profile, are these stunningly good looking wheels. Yes, they're a very good shape, very good color, and what would be the Continental recommended tire for an LC500? The Extreme Contact Sport. So now to push this muscle car through cliche corner a little bit. Japanese luxury muscle. It's such a good rear wheel drive V8 feeling car. It feels like, like the muscle car Challenger and Camaro style. Yeah, kind of, I can see that. Very easy to oversteer if you want and very controllable. You have to have the traction control off, which you can only do at a full stop. Yeah, which is a little bit more. And then the traction control warning is always on, which sucks, there's no way to get rid of it. So before you drive, I'm gonna blabber on about the interior real quick. Go for it. We got a nice tan in here. The materials are stupendous. Everything is so luxurious, it looks amazing. These door handles are so heavy duty and luxurious. Everything about this interior is incredible. The grab handles, the quality of everything. This is the convertible, so it's totally different than the coupe, where we have semi aniline leather because you're gonna have the top down so if it gets wet you would ruin suede where here you're not gonna ruin it. it's just gonna stay gorgeous but the only thing that sucks is our infotainment is not a touchscreen it is controlled by this trackpad 
which I hate. However, I like this trackpad more than I like the Acura style trackpads because this one isn't absolute button touches where like the top left is the top left. And then we've got a lot of hard buttons, volume knob and tuning knob down there as well. So you can use a lot more buttons than just touch. Yeah, and this car's saving grace is the fact that it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And rewinding satellite radio stations. Of course, of naturally. Course. <laughs> okay, so how about our gauge cluster? It's one of the cool Lexus ones that moves to the side with a little menu on the left. Yeah, and it changes between the drive modes. Sport S Plus, I think, looks the best with Obviously. the white. Obviously. Obviously. So these seats, very comfortable, no real issues at all, except for that there's no up and down lumbar, only forward and back. Yeah, but ridiculously comfortable. Then heated and cooled seats as well. And we also have a little vent down our necks, which is not called an air scarf, but that's what Mercedes has. And all of it is controlled through the infotainment, which is a little bit annoying to use, but eventually you kind of get used to it. Yeah, they, they should have more hard buttons. But let's talk about these visors real quick. Uh, let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh, that's really flimsy. Fail, Fail. supercar pass? No, no, okay. no. <laughs> Cup holder, we have a little panel that flips up right here and it'll fit a small cup of today's McDonald's coffee. Absolutely perfect. Looks great. And if you're doing a Timmy's, I think it'll fit. Maybe I'll test it out in a future LC500 review. Maybe the coupe when we do that eventually. Should we do a coupe review? I mean, we're already doing the convertible. We probably should. Maybe with like the performance pack or something. That'd be fun. Yeah, I guess. Who, who knows? Because this know one doesn't have it. Who knows what the future holds for us? So lastly, let's talk about the back seats before you drive. Can you fit in them? Absolutely not. Are they real back seats? No, not really. But who cares, right? I mean, they exist. I want to find out if there's more room in the back seats in the coupe, but we'll find out that later. Your turn to drive. Horsepower and torque. This is your first on-camera launch in an LC500. I'm so excited, Yuri. And that sounds so good. I think this is the happiest we've both been in a car. It sounds incredible. It feels incredible. It pulls incredibly. I'm going to downshift incredibly and listen to that again. Oh, okay, I'm nailing it off the rev limiter because it's so fun to do. It's not gonna damage the engine. It's fine. Savage Geese has done it multiple times. It sounds so good that it's hard not to do that constantly. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's definitely really cool. And like, we both obviously love the sound of this, right? Yeah, we, we yes, we can shift before the rev limiter, but I'm choosing not. Okay, but say it's parked and I wanna rev it. Can I rev it all the way to redline? Let's find out. Yes, you obviously can. Thank you, every car company needs to do this. Yeah, like German cars seem to not do it, but then some of the super high-end AMGs do, like the GTR. Cars are weird, Yes. but if you buy a car that's expensive, let me do whatever I want to it. That's the whole point of buying it. Yeah, pretty much. And then sometimes you'll even get some like backfires or whatever when you're shifting. Yeah, and it sounds so good because we have the convertible so we can actually hear them. But you'd probably be able to hear it pretty loud with the windows down in a coupe too. Probably, and it's usually on downshifts, so I didn't get it that time, let me try it again. It's gotta get a little hot. No, not that much, I, I like a like, tiny bit. It, like a pre-pop. Yeah, but you do get it sometimes and it's so good when you do. It's just oh, nasty. <laughs> and it's and it's natural, there's nothing fake about it. It's not like a rap, 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 rap. it's just good, 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 good. Yeah, and our red line's around 7,000, just over that. And this 10-speed automatic is amazing. It shifts so quickly. So when you're flooring it, you can actually feel the shifts. And when you're just driving normally, it's seamless. Yeah, it's, it's good. Very good programming. And the paddles feel really good. They are metal, but I feel like my ISF paddles felt better than these ones in 2008. More metally? Yeah. And earlier you mentioned that this is rear wheel drive, but we don't have any rear wheel steering because you can't get the performance package on the convertible. Not a deal breaker for me. I yeah. think after driving this convertible, I love convertibles. I, I could probably use more convertibles in my fleet. I wouldn't mind giving that up to have this. See, and I don't have any convertibles in my fleet Dude. and I would kind of consider this like a lot because this is my favorite car I've driven this year. Daily a convertible is the best and you should try it. I would love to with this. And time for my first on-camera cliche corner send in this. Oh my God, that downshift. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, it sounds incredible. Okay, handling. The steering does exactly what I want it to do. I don't feel like I need four-wheel steering and let's see if it drifts. 
Sure does. No problem. And it's so predictable. It's so precise. Like, don't you get those like Camaro ZL11 LE feelings from just a little bit? Yeah, and the M2 competition, everything that has handled well before this, this is that benchmark this, again. This is the top of the tier list for rear wheel drive handling cars. I'm almost speechless. Like, this is incredible. There's so little body roll. The suspension is also really comfortable. I am in Sport Plus or Sport S Plus, whatever it's called. It feels so good. I don't feel like it's too stiff. Even in comfort, it's just, it's incredible. They nailed it. Wow. No wonder Savage Geese has reviewed this like, what, a thousand times by now? And then theoretically, if we want to do some burnouts and donuts, could we in this? Yes, we can. It's theoretically a whole lot of fun and we theoretically enjoyed it. However, we had to theoretically make sure we were in traction control off before we started because you couldn't do it while you were driving. And if you're doing a brake stand, AKA a burnout, you can't theoretically have your foot fully on the brake. You have to let off just a little theoretically. Theoretically, yes. And I did mention drive modes, but we didn't mention how to change them. So we have these two kind of like horn things sticking out of the cluster. It's a little weird, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's uh, totally weird, but I like that they put that there instead of anywhere else because they didn't ruin the looks of anything in this interior, and I feel like adding buttons somewhere else might have done that. Yeah, pretty much. And we also have some secret hidden buttons for the convertible top, oh. which are so cool. Okay, this armrest slides back, and then it also slides up, and then in front of that is your little latch for your convertible stuff. Which at first, I thought it was just the palm rest, and I'm looking everywhere, I'm like, how do I take this damn convertible top down? It's both. Yeah. Anyways, the way this thing opens and closes is perfect. Nothing weird. It's not like it's going to snap your finger. It's very luxury. And then we also have this weird shifter, which for the first time when I used it, I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized that it's just a Prius shifter just made really fancy. Yeah, they just added a stick to a Prius shifter. You could probably take this off and attach it to a Prius and it'll be the exact same thing. Yeah, because that pattern is actually just printed straight off the Prius, yeah. I think. So you get into drive and you push down to go into manual and then to go back to drive, you need to click left down not just left because that throws you into neutral. Yeah, and to mark the special occasion of the LC500, I'm gonna do two cents through Cliche Corner. Oh my God, okay. Oh my God, this is insanely controllable. Like, I can make it do whatever I want. It's insanely good. Yo, I feel like, I feel like this is almost better than a Supra. It's way better than a Supra. But I don't wanna dig, I don't wanna get into that right now. This is, yeah. Wow. So I want to bring up this head-up display. We have a HUD button on the left, which will turn it on and off, but to control what's there and the brightness and the positioning, we need to do that through the gauge cluster. I don't really like this one. I feel like if you're not perfectly lined up, it's a backfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit blurry, which we also had that issue in the RAV4 Prime. Yeah, watch that video coming out soon. So overall, don't need that head-up display. No, because this gauge is perfect. Unless the traction control thing is in front of it, which we have no idea how to turn off close to perfect. And since this is a convertible, people probably are wondering about trunk space and it's actually pretty good. I can't imagine there being much more room in the coupe, so I'm happy with that. It fits our carry-on bags just fine. And at first when we were trying to figure out how to open the trunk, there's no kick to open, there's no actual buttons until we found the one hidden in the tail light. Yeah, sneaky, but I like it. And you can also open it from the fob and inside the car. So with all that out of the way on finally our first LC500 review, let's get to the price. Downshift first. I think this is the best sounding car. Yes, like, like pretty for much, sure. like ever, all around. Yes, 100%. For not being too loud in the perfect tone, price. Okay, price. $122,700. Canadian. Very reasonable price, I think. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for these things to depreciate and like pick one up in like 15 years. Yeah, uh, considering the convertible hasn't depreciated yet because it's brand new, I looked at the coupe prices and they're kind of reasonable now competition we've got the amg gt convertible which we drove earlier the gtc's oh, man i love that but do you like this more i think so exactly okay. holy bmw 8 series convertible this for sure 100 percent. even though that thing is probably way faster yes this can do zero to 100 in about four and a half seconds so it's not slow okay a corvette convertible i mean this over a ca convertible i mean mid-engine's cool but this, this sound I think is better yeah 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 jag f-type maybe even the svr i like this even though the crack is impossible are good. The crackles cool. and, yeah, the crackles and pops are incredible. Unless you can get one of the older F-types in manual, then I could change my mind. But sure. you couldn't get that with a V8 ever. And I think this still looks way better. And then lastly, I guess the 911 Cabrio. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe but, like an R8 and maybe even an NSX, but that's going up in price. Yeah, and then there's no NSX convertible unless you're in the Marvel universe. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite car maybe ever. 
I think they killed it. It's it's awesome. It's perfect. There's nothing really bad to say about it besides I don't like this touchpad, but I also don't care because everything else is so good. So let us know what you guys think of our LC500 convertible review. I don't care what you guys think of this yeah. car. I just want to know what you guys think of our review because it took us so long to get this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, watch this video here, which is a... I don't know, something. Sports cars. Sports car convertibles. Grand touring cars. Maybe even like, yeah, stuff like that. Click.